Okay. Um, our next speaker is uh, uh, Professor Andrew Palmer. Um, uh, Professor Palmer has been doing research in the horse racing industry um, and he'll be talking about that research here. He's over, he has over 20 years experience in health economics and outcomes research and is a widely published and internationally respected health uh, economist. He studied medicine at the University of Tasmania and worked at the Launceston General Hospital and then as a GP in Sydney. In 94 he moved to, to Switzerland where he was a researcher and medical director of the Institute uh, for Medical Informatics and Biostatistics until 2000. He co-founded CORE, which is the Centre for Outcomes Research in Switzerland, and in 2000, was, uh, uh, in 2000, and was CEO until, until 2005 before moving back to Tasmania. In addition to uh, his work in the horse racing industry, he has conducted research and published uh, extensively in disease areas including obesity and bariatric surgery, aged care, diabetes, kidney disease, heart disease, bicycling uh, incidents, osteoporosis, alcoholism, multiple sclerosis and oncology. Andrew was appointed Honorary Fellow of the Menzies Institute in December 2008 and New Star Professor of Medical Research. He is the founding chair of the Health Economics in uh, August 2009. Andrew and his team uh, were recently awarded a grant from uh, WorkCover, and I think this is important. WorkCover are uh, doing a lot of, lot of work be, behind the scenes, I suppose, with research and with their grants program. This is, uh, this is an example and a wonderful case study. Um, he looked at uh, injuries to jockeys, and he'll give us an overview of his findings. Um, this grants program, by the way, has been operating now for four years, and this is just one example. So ladies and gentlemen, Professor Andrew Palmer. Uh, Alan. It's uh, my pleasure to be here this morning. I'm going to share with you some of the results of our research that's been conducted over the last five or six years by my team. I'm going to be presenting uh, work that's been done by some of my colleagues as well as some of my own work, uh, Dr Peter Hitchens and Dr Beverly Curry, so uh, acknowledgement to them. I promise I'm not going to eat any lemons or jockeys or horses or anything like that during the, uh, during the presentation. And as Alan mentioned, this, uh, a lot of this work was funded by uh, a $50,000 grant from WorkCover that allowed us to actually work with WorkCover analysing claims data to come up with some of our risk assessments and costs of uh, jockey falls and accidents all over Australia. So thoroughbred racing really contributes quite substantially to uh, our Australian economy with providing many thousands of full-time equivalent jobs, contributes over a billion dollars per year in taxes to the, the federal government. And despite this, in Tasmania there's only actually been work cover um, coverage of jockeys uh, in Tasmania since 2007. It started actually in New South Wales, Victoria and Queensland in 2002, but only available in, in South Australia and Tassie since 2007. There's a problem. Jockey injuries are a fact of life at the racetrack, um, but there are lots of unanswered questions, or there were lots of unanswered questions that we've been able to address using this funding. You know, what are the actual risks of falling for jockeys and injuries? Um, what kind of things increase that risk uh, or predispose to those risks? What are the costs of those falls to society, to work cover, etc.? And what policy changes can we possibly recommend to decrease those risks? So, uh, maybe a show of hands, who's actually been to the races? Yeah, so just, probably just about everyone. And for most people, the experience of race, uh, going to the races is you know, having a flutter, having a sherbet, having a good time, uh, most importantly, wearing a silly hat. And uh, you know, in the background, you can see some horses ridden by jockeys there. Uh, is anyone directly involved in the racing industry here? Okay, are there any jockeys here? Could maybe stand up on your chair? <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this is mainly fun. There are, of course, some inherent risks of spectating. 
but they mainly just appear on Facebook or Instagram or your you know, favourite social media. For the jockeys, though, there are serious uh, risks undertaken every time they go out and ride the horse. So man versus beast. You've got the, the man, or these days very often a woman, weight you know, 50 kilograms. They're about two and a half to three metres off the ground, travelling at between 50 and 80 kilometres an hour. Uh, versus the beast, the horse. So we're only looking at thoroughbred racehorses here. They weigh, weigh roughly 500 kilograms. Um, as I said, speed over the ground, 50 to 80 kilometres an hour. The thing I didn't put on this picture was the size of the horse's brain because it probably wouldn't actually show up. It's about the size of a walnut. So that uh, leads to a couple of kind of uh, behavioural things. So horses have good memories, but they're not good thinkers. They're not good problem solvers. When something frightens them or they're not sure about something, their natural reaction is to jump sideways, lash out, rear up, um, bite. So fairly simplistic, mainly reflex behaviours, which lead to a lot of implications um, on the racetrack and around the racetrack. Now, if things do go wrong for a jockey, it, on the racetrack during a race, things can go you know, horribly wrong. So you can see the 500 kilogram horse. Uh, you've got the jockey going about 80 k's an hour, about to do a face plant into the turf. You've got other horses coming up behind. Uh, if that horse doing a backflip is about, could land on the jockey, you know, there's potential for life-threatening injuries there. So I'll just run a little clip. Um, if you keep your eye on first this guy in the white, just towards the last third of the field, and then the carnage just unfolds after that. So I think if I press, um, not that. <laughs> um, <laughs> help. <laughs> i just flip through. And the guy upside down, okay. And I think, uh, I've missed a technician over there, can you maybe press the, oh, okay. So if you just watch the guy, he goes down, the horse goes down, face plant, trodden on, kicked, everyone's losing balance, falling over, people getting sandwiched between two horses, uh, stomped on, and then people just falling off because you know, they're in that precarious, perched up position, basically clinging on just with their calves. So anything that's going to kind of make the horse dip, dive, get unbalanced will lead to a, potentially lead to a jockey coming off. Uh, at the time I wrote this slide, there were about 307 uh, jockey fatalities in Australia from 1847 to present. I think that's gone up by four in the last couple of years. So on average, about two jockeys are killed every year. So how often do these falls occur? And we were able to answer that by digging through uh, you know, race, race day data, um, work cover claims, etc. There's a difference between flat racing and jumps racing, so hurdles and steeplechases. On average, flat racing, falls occur about one in every 240 rides. Okay, there are probably 190,000 rides around Australia, racing rides every year. In jumps racing, because of that instability, uh, the horse doing funny things, doing unexpected things, tripping, that's 10 times higher, or more than 10 times higher, so about 19, uh, one fall every 19 rides. 88% of those occur at the fence itself. So we were able to dig through and do sophisticated statistical analyses, regression analyses, etc., and find out well what were the predisposing things or what, what increases those risk of falls. So it kind of, you know, it all makes sense and it's obvious at the end once you've done it. So inexperienced jockeys. So apprentice jockeys and people with a low number of rides. Inexperienced horses, so horses that are young, uh, haven't had many races, many starts. Uh, female jockeys, and that's probably on account of 
Uh, their power to rate, weight ratio is a little bit lower, so on average they probably have a 10% higher risk of uh, falling compared to men. Lower race grades, which can indicate several things, including horse experience, etc. Shorter race distances, so the horses are going much faster, a little bit more unstable. If you come off, it hurts even more. And the same thing, drier track rating, so allowing horses to go much faster. So just to illustrate that first point, you can see on the bottom axis we've plotted the number of career rides. So these guys over here have less than 50 versus you know, almost 2,000 over on the right. And the risk of falls per 100 ride. You can see quite clearly that trend that the more experienced you become and you manage to survive, then the, the, your risk of falls fall by about 50%. So these I like to call the stairways to heaven and for jockeys unfortunately there are several stairways to heaven. This particular graph is really plotting the combined effect I guess of, of uh, jockey experience versus horse experience. So previous starts by the horse. So over this side you can see the jockey's career rides. On this axis you can see the previous starts by horses and then the height of that column reflects that fall, the number of or the risk of falls per ride. So if you're an experienced rider with more than 2,000 rides, riding a horse with more than 30 starts, you know, you, the risk is fairly low. If you happen to be an apprentice jockey, inexperienced jockey with not very many rides, riding an uh, inexperienced horse this coming Saturday, you've got pretty good reason to be starting to get nervous. Okay, so that's that main column there. So the next stairway to heaven, the combined effect of jockey experience and race grade. So we put uh, three different ways of, of race, uh, grading the races. So maiden means a horse has never, never won a race before. So maiden races, open horses never, uh, never won a race. A class races, so you have class one to six. If you won one uh, race, you can go in class one. Two races, you go in class two etc. up to race uh, uh, class 6 and open and restricted. So a restrict, restricted race would be uh, you know, like the Hobart Cup or the Melbourne Cup where you have to qualify on the amount of prize money you've won etc. Again versus the career rides of the jockey. So in the maiden classes where the horses are again less experienced, lower quality horses, uh, you have higher risk across the board and again, if you have less rides and riding, a maiden, riding in a maiden class race, your risk is much higher than, than uh, an experienced jockey in an open or restricted race. And as I mentioned before, jockeys riding in a sprint race are at a much higher risk just because of that ex uh, increased velocity of the horse going down the track. So where our, our cooperation with WorkCover really helped was working out the cost of jockey falls. Uh, so obviously there's a database in uh, each state of those costs, you know, what, what, what are the, the costs of the claims of each claim. Uh, I think I mentioned that New South Wales, Victoria started uh, WorkCover in 2002, Tasmania, South Australia in 2007. So we were able to look at over those time periods in all those different states, 2,900 odd Australian um, jockey compensation or insurance claims. They turn out to be a you know, fairly staggering $8.6 million per year, the total amount that's including the direct medical costs, the uh, you know, salary replacement, uh, rehabilitation costs, uh, all of those kind of costs, $8.6 million a year. So there are about 770 claims per year. Uh, there were about 0.6 claims per thousand rides for flats, and again, 10 times higher claims rate for jumps races. The most commonly reported injuries were limb fractures, uh, soft tissue and tissue muscular injuries, and contusions, so you know, cuts and bruises. What was really interesting, and it kind of revealed a hidden cost to, uh, to racing, the majority of those claims are actually non-race day claims. So around the stables, you know, getting horses in and out of stables, uh, in, the, in the yards, 
uh, doing track work, all of those kinds of things. But the, the average cost claim was about 20,000. 39% of claims were race day incidents, and they had a higher cost claim again, uh, uh, cost per claim. Again, that's probably because the horses are you know, hurtling down the track with a much uh, greater chance of severe injury. On average, average jockeys were absent for about nine weeks uh, following a claim. Again, a differential between flats and, uh, and jumps races. You've got those big horses leaping over things, squashing you, basically. So you get a little bit more squashed when, um, when you're doing a jumps race. So the next thing we did was, OK, we know the, the cost of different kinds of claims. We know the probabilities and what kind of things affect them of having a, a, a fall. We developed some um, decision analysis software, quite a sophisticated analysis, and said, OK, what if we implement some new policies and uh, demonstrate the impact on the risk of falls and also those, the total cost to the racing industry in Australia? So I'll just show you two. So policy, we, we compared to the current situation versus a new policy. One, restriction of any apprentice jockeys riding in maiden races. Uh, policy two, restriction of any apprentice jockeys riding horses with less than five previous starts. So that's you know, trying to eliminate that's those two stairways to heaven, if you will. So the status quo, you know, about 190,000 rides per year, uh, 769 falls per year, um, four and a half million dollars per year in just race day claims. Policy one, restricting uh, to maiden, uh, no apprentices in maiden races. We have 5% less falls with about $3.8 million in savings to the Australian racing industry. Quite a substantial saving. And the other policy, again, restricting falls, uh, reducing falls by about 4.6% and nearly $4 million per year. Uh, sorry, uh, half a million dollars per year in savings. Obviously that assumes that there are sufficient, uh, more experienced jockeys to step in and take the place of those apprentice jockeys in those particular uh, classes or types of races. So implications and recommendations following this. So we came up with quite a few. Um, more severe injuries occur during the race. Most falls occur on race day pre or post race, so in the mounting yard, warming up after the race is finished. Currently the ambulance only follows the race now from the start of the race, jumping out of the gate to the end of the race and then it drives off, we recommend that the ambulance should actually follow them from the mounting yard to the finishing enclosure. So at least they're there to you know, first aid straight away. Uh, we saw those, what the impact of restricting um, you know, early career jockeys from riding maiden races or inexperienced horses. Um, maybe we should provide better training and conditioning for both both flat and jumps jockeys. Uh, maybe minimum standards or testing for jockeys' experience uh, and, and ability. Uh, more thorough education of the horses so that they have more practice rates in, in reduced fields, etc., before they're actually allowed onto the track. And really, we need to continue to collect objective medical uh, and falls data as we go along so that we can compare over, over time. So this funding by work covers allowed us to quantify the risk, identify these predisposing factors and possibly make policy changes, quantify the costs. Um, and I, we really identified these hidden non-race day costs as well of, uh, to the racing industry. So this is the sad bit and the realistic bit. Uh, to our knowledge, the racing in industry is yet to implement any of these recommendations. So you know, this networking opportunity may be where the, you know, the messages filter through, people discuss, and so on. Um, on the good side, so I like to finish on a positive note, the, uh, we, you know, we have baseline data on risks of falls, so if we do implement any changes, uh, we can now see the impact over time. So a big thank you to Work Cover, the Australian Racing Board, State Principal Racing Authorities, Australian Jockeys Association and to the jockeys themselves. So a spare a thought for them next time you're at the races, enjoying the enjoying the day. Thank you.